Taxi! This week, can we swing it in Scotland? It's a house hunting we go. Hit the view already. <laughs> <laughs> As we rock and roll between country and city, if we can't get the numbers we need. Nine. <laughs> Nothing's there. Can we have a couple of ticks? Will we have to step off the beaten track? I'm lost already. To dazzle both sets of house hunters. Look at that. <laughs> he's frowning already. No, he's not frowning. He's looking rather brighter than he has all day. <laughs> We're hard at work in Scotland, mastering Munro's and staking out the city in a bid to find new homes. Both our couples are searching for the perfect properties that have eluded them so far. They always will, Phil. No such thing as perfect properties. We can but try. Perfect people, on the other hand. Oh, Kirsty, you're too kind. Scenery perfection is not hard to come by in Bonnie, Scotland. Our search area this week takes in the alluring slopes and locks of the countryside, as well as the grit and glamour of Glasgow. It's said that Scotland's largest city is second only to London as a UK shopping destination. However, the cost of living here is almost 40% cheaper than London. So a ride in a black cab won't take you into the red. Taxi! What are you doing in Glasgow? Looking for property then? Always looking for property. Always looking for property. Yeah. What's it like around here at the moment? Glasgow, uh, great city to live in. Uh, very vibrant nightlife. Yeah. Great universities. Great place to live. It's a very diverse place, West End especially. And that's just where my couple want to be. Flat hunting, here we come. Urbanites Anna and Mikey have set their hearts on one of the most sought after parts of the city. But I'll be roaming further afield, across several counties, including Argyle and Stirlingshire, with ex-military man John and his partner of four years, Stella. That's a long walk up there. They've made the bold decision to relocate nearly 500 miles from Hampshire to John's native Scotland, where he's not lived permanently for nearly three decades. We've been coming up to Scotland for a few years now, and it's just so beautiful. And the people, certainly, that I've met have been lovely as well, which is nice. You can't Very speak friendly. the language yet, no, but it'll yet. come to that. <laughs> Practising. <laughs> the great outdoors is one of the main attractions here for this active pair of 40-somethings. You know, if I can open my door and climb a mountain, you know, on a Sunday afternoon or get on my bike, fantastic. Since adulthood, neither have lived in one place for more than three years, so there's a lot riding on this move. We want to be settled, we don't want to be moving again. Um, and so, yeah, it's really important to us that we find the right place. Not only are they taking the plunge into a new environment, they want a house they could start a family in and also allow them to make some career shifts to work from home. Stella would like to start a catering business aimed at holiday makers. It's quite important that we're in an area where you're in close proximity to the tourist area, where you get lots of visitors. And last, but by no means least, this longed-for permanent address has to have one pretty special permanent feature. To me, this is about the view. I must be able to set a window and have a great view. That is one of my must-haves. A man of simple needs, just like Phil. Though with such a huge life change and a lot of ground to cover, I have a feeling that this search is going to be far from simple. So, big move for you guys. An exciting time, but also quite scary, I'd imagine. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite daunting yeah. to uh, to be coming from one end of the country to the other. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot to take on. We like it? a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> You're searching across a massive, yeah. massive area. Mm. The nice thing up here is there are so many different properties. We've, you know, our list of possibles mm. is, is yeah. huge and a bit overwhelming. So you ring Phil and Kirsty. They've got loads of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A few more miles on the it. clock. <laughs> How can we narrow it down? It's a bit lifestyle, views. Yeah, we don't want to be too remote. <laughs> We'd like a bit of community as well around us. Mm. It really is a move that's driven by lifestyle, but mm. you're going to embrace that, haven't Absolutely. got here, and you yeah. want a house that's going to enable you to do that. Yeah. So does that mean you're going to be particularly fussy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we're getting that clear yeah. to start with. Quite literally, you asked for that, Phil. Indeed. My particularly fussy pair have a budget of £350,000, but would consider pushing upwards for the perfect combination. They're after a semi-rural location with a priceless vista. A house with a good-sized kitchen diner, four bedrooms, handy for visiting family and friends, and home office space. With good links to a local community. 
They're open to looking in areas across two regions, Perth and Kinross, as well as Stirlingshire. But I may have to extend the search area to the west to fulfill such a specific wish list. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. While Phil's covering 100 plus miles of countryside, my patch is urban Glasgow, where 25 year old Anna and 24 year old Mikey are relocating from Edinburgh. It's a stipulation of Mikey's new business development job that he lives there. And for them, Glasgow means the West End. It's busy, there's lots of good bars, restaurants. It's nice to sort of have enough like city feel without actually obviously being right in the city itself. Quite a lot. Your family's based in the West End. Yeah. We have some friends in the West End, so if we're moving through, we'd rather be near people that we're going to be spending our time with. And wherever they choose to live must be big enough to invite them all round. As soon as Mikey was offered his job, they started their property hunt for a flat, and it came as a bit of a shock. We've never looked to buy properties before. I've not even looked to rent properties before. I lived with my friend at uni, so I didn't need to think about that, then I moved in with you, so I've never had to think about what I actually want. But they've gone from viewing virgins to viewing veterans very quickly, seeing more than 40 flats. Yeah, it's quite a lot. <laughs> and our novice house hunters have had the benefit of parental input. Mikey's mum, Anne, works in housing, so a bit of competition for you, Kirsty. The more the merrier, Phil. Along with Dad, Jamie, she's been on about 80% of the flat viewings. Oh, nice. Mm. Nice unit. Yeah. But despite two parents, two months and over 40 viewings, they're no closer to a flat. Anne is getting frustrated and she knows why. I feel like you always make an excuse for things. Yeah, like I probably am quite fussy. You're more negative, so Kirsty and Phil will probably kind of kick you into touch a bit. Shape. <laughs> what? Kick you into shape. Oh, is that the word? Kick you into touch means get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it won't come to that, Mikey. It's not a bad thing to be fussy. It's not fussy, it's just I like to... I'm, Get it right. I'm quite a perfectionist, so yeah, I want of course. it to be it's, right. You, you should. Yeah. You should want it to be right. No property has a 100% pull. You may be expecting a really fantastic flat to sort of grab mm. you by the collar and drag you towards it, <laughs> and that might not happen. Yes. Yeah. So just give me, each of you, your deal breaker and your compromise. OK. I'd say the big kitchen is the deal breaker. Yeah. And I guess for me, a compromise would be maybe the no outside space. Uh, I think the deal breaker probably is the big kitchen yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably always been kind of number one. And the compromise <laughs> is probably the place we need to have a lot of sort of character, and it's that's yeah. probably more important to Anna than it is to me. Yeah. So I'd be yeah. happy major to on that. <laughs> yeah, okie doke. Okay, cool. So it, you need my head banging abilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think right. So. Okay, I'm quite good at that. <laughs> yes, just the sort of thing to put a spring in your step, eh, Kirsty? It's a house hunting we go. A house hunting we go. With an absolute top budget of £140,000, Mikey and Anna want a classic Scottish tenement flat with a large dining kitchen. One bedroom is fine and some character would be appreciated, as would some outside space to socialise in. And our first-time buyers are keen to keep their search within two square miles of Glasgow's West End, to keep them close to family, friends and transport. So one search is as narrow as the other is broad. Whether rural or urban, we're working with tight budgets for what they want, so we need to ride the challenges. How'd you get on? Hmm. I think it's a case of uh, she's exasperated and he won't decide. OK. So he's just very kind of risk-averse. She just wants to get on with it, yeah. you know, and he's like, no, 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 no. Mm. Yeah. Well, my couple are facing quite big challenges simply because everything's new in their life. They've moved up to Scotland, they want this brand new lifestyle, they're setting up new businesses. New house hunter. New house hunter, maybe that's where they've been going wrong. Yes, I know. So I'll get quite. Well, you can think of me in Glasgow's bars and coffee shops. You'll be enjoying yourself. I'll be enjoying Keep out of the shops. Make sure you see more flats than flat whites. Ha ha, a feather in your cappuccino for that one, Phil. I'll be hunting in the west end of Glasgow, where there's no shortage of the tenement flats Anna and Mikey are after. Famed for their high ceilings and generous proportions, tenement buildings have been a staple of Glasgow's housing scene for over 150 years. 
But the West End's busy urban vibe make it very popular, and that means flats can often sell for over the quoted market value. In Scotland, this figure is determined by a home report, a survey document that vendors here are legally obliged to provide. Very useful knowledge, particularly for my first-time buyers. So, do I get a gold star for location? You get a yes. gold star for ten location. Out of ten. Right. We're starting our search in Partick, one of their favourite parts of the West End. Just a few minutes walk from cafes and shops. Can I ask you one thing? Yes. How bad would this flat have to be for you to reject it? Pretty bad. Ah, mm. <laughs> uh, you see, Mikey we'll is. Wait and is see. <laughs> I think Mikey is the rogue element in this search. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Takes one to know one, as they say. Well, there's nothing rogue about this top floor flat. It has that top of the list must have dining kitchen, and the lounge, bedroom, and bathroom also have decent dimensions. Having been a rental for the past 14 years, there's lots of potential to improve. But although pitched at offers over £105,000, its desirable location could well see bids go over the home report value of £120,000. That's still under budget, and I hope this place will be enough to finally make Mikey commit. Oh, that's a big smile, Anna. <laughs> I like the size. Yep. It obviously needs a lot of work. It needs yeah, work. Definitely needs a good bit of uh, tarting up. Yeah, a seeing past the way it looks just now and yep. trying to see the potential. Uh-huh. You're saying to me you're trying to see the potential. Yeah. That is a statement that worries me. You've got the light, you've got the height, and you've got the size. Yeah. Everything else is irrelevant. Only on the market a few days, there's already four notes of interest and a closing date for sealed bids of noon tomorrow. So others aren't struggling to see the potential, Mikey, including one significant other. I quite like it. Vintage. <laughs> yeah. It's practically back in fashion, isn't it? Maybe he's got more vision than you give him credit for, Kirsty. Are you feeling it? Are you not feeling it? I think you can 100% tell that it's been a rental. Yeah, it's, obviously. Yeah. Or maybe not. I love this flat. It's a cracking flat. Why would a young couple not have the energy and vision to see how good it can be? All well and good that you can see the potential, but are you offering to get the paintbrushes out yourself? So, what are you thinking? Um, I like the idea that we can kind of put our own stamp on it and really get stuck in, but I really don't know what you're thinking. I think... I'm not... It's not usually standing out when I think of all the ones we've seen. Not sure that's the response you were quite hoping for, Kirsty. Maybe the back garden can swing it. It's a nice, tidy communal space. Your pants could dry in the wind. <laughs> it does feel kind of private. Good plus. Good plus. Did you hear that? Good plus. <laughs> well, who doesn't want dry pants? But I don't think that's made it all line up for Mikey. The flat is in the right location. Yep. Yeah. It's a good price. Yes. Yeah. So why is it not grabbing you by the ghoulies, Mikey? <laughs> Just probably the work, the, the cost. The figure could uh -huh. simply be new carpet, new lino. I think sometimes when I get into the property, I'm forgetting about other things, like the fact that it is essentially an ideal location. That's the thing. Someone once told me, it's all about location. <laughs> <laughs> you might need more than a spot on location to get Mikey to take the plunge and give yourself something to crow about. <laughs> this week we're in Scotland with two couples who want more than their budget can buy them. Anna and Mikey are after a city pad in one of Glasgow's most desirable districts. And Stella and John are moving nearly 500 miles to start a new life surrounded by locks and mountains. You know what you're about to have. Uphill struggles. Uphill struggle. But Phil's not the only one struggling. My first property for Mikey and Anna in Glasgow's West End didn't dazzle Mikey. It's not usually standing out. A competitive market and high expectations aren't adding up to a property match made in heaven. Out in the country, I'm trying to match John and Stella with their ideal forever home. Moving up from Hampshire, this outdoorsy pair have high hopes for a big house with a belter of a view. For my first property, we're heading 18 miles north of Glasgow. When you get to the Bonnie Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond, take a right to reach the village of Balfron. 
We're about eight minutes drive from the village, so close to the community life thereafter, and with the West Highland Way and the Trossachs National Park nearby, there's a decent supply of tourists to bring Stella's catering business to life. I'm, I'm hoping Kirsty's going to join us. She's supposed to be here. Maybe she's taken the high road by mistake. But I'm not holding off on showing off this view. Now, somebody talked about having uninterrupted <laughs> views. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not overlooked at all. How about that? <laughs> that view is fantastic, yeah. Absolutely, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. How does this setting strike you? It what, does what's feel a little out? bit remote, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> I don't disagree. Yeah. We've come quite a long mm -hmm. way off the main road yes. in order to get the elevation. Yeah. yeah. It is only a short drive to the village, so I hope when Stella sees what else this place has to offer, she'll start feeling the love rather than feeling remote. The large garden and double garage have to be a bonus, and there's plenty to shout about inside. The big sell of this home is the drawing room and its 40-foot living area with floor-to-ceiling windows that really bring the outside in. You've got some big doors and a lot of glass that really kind of celebrates that view. There are also three bedrooms, two of which are upstairs, along with a mezzanine area. On it offers over £349,995. With the Scottish system, they may need to push over their budget of 350 grand if they fall for the amazing outlook. That's lovely mm. one. Nice big high ceilings. Mm. It's about the view. Yeah. Yes, that's why yeah, I wanted you to, to yeah. see this one. I mean, yeah. that's the first tick, mm. definitely, as a view. Yeah. Can we have uh, a couple of ticks? Uh, <laughs> An extra one for that, <laughs> for a better view, yeah. yeah. Maybe I can help you get those extra ticks, Phil. And then we have the kitchen. Oh, and a Kirsty at the window. Uh. Well, come on in. Better late than never, I guess. It's definitely Stella's the men, <laughs> not mine. What the kitchen is. <laughs> How rude. You can tell that's I didn't want to come crashing in if there was a domestic. <laughs> there was just about to be a domestic. Bit early in the day for what the Scots call a stramash, but never too early to talk about renovating. Um, what's beyond that wall? The most incredible yeah. room. Mm. I'm inclined to think knock it down. Oh, Kirsty, you do surprise oh, me. Yeah. No, just take down that wall, because yeah. you want to be able to see that view. Yeah, definitely. And I wouldn't want to be stuck in here, no. <laughs> like yeah, cooking and everyone's in there having a nice no. time. Do you two want to help yourself have a look around the bedrooms? Yeah. OK, that'd be good, yeah. yeah. It has one less bedroom than they're after, but the mezzanine offers some room for manoeuvre, and I think John's looking to the positives. Great. I mean, that view again sat here. But I'm not sure Stella's seeing the charm. The idea of living out yeah. is great, isn't it? But the reality of not having access yeah. to even some form of sort of amenities or, or some sort of community. Uh-oh, not sounding like forever home potential to me, Phil. Unfortunately, their budget may not be able to accommodate all that they're after. If they want the views and four yeah. bedrooms and all of that, yeah. that's quite a lot for 350. Yeah, we've yet, yes. to, yet to find the compromises, but... Early days. Early days. Early days. Give me time. There's certainly no compromise outside, with all the storage they'd need for bikes, kayaks, and even a few cars. Ah, how about that? <laughs> that is a good size. It's not <clears throat> bad, is it? Yeah. Boys and their toys. But I somehow doubt a garage will clinch it for Stella. About the remoteness. Mm -hmm. We passed through a really nice village mm -hmm. on the way here. It was more of a community. Do you think that's more what you're after? I think on the edge. Not in a town, but on the edge of a, on the very edge of a town, you know, just where you've got a little bit Something. of a community. Yeah. I think that's really what I'm looking for. This is a definite no, then. Yes. Oh, dear. I think John's going to have to love it for this place to stand any chance. Now I've been around the house, you've got... It does feel two parts. An old house with quite small rooms. You go into this lovely part and then yeah. all of a sudden it comes yeah. in on you. Yeah. So that's that, Phil. At this stage, it seems any compromise is a compromise too far. Well, we came, we explored, we learned. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think we can move forward. You're in Phil's yeah. capable hands. But even my capable hands will be hard-pressed to offer them all they want within budget. Cheer up, Pip. Come and get your city groove on in Glasgow for a bit. Back with Anna and Mikey, we're still in the Partick region, just slightly further out. And although we're on a main road, this is the location of a flat they were once interested in. And why didn't you go for it? Probably the... It needed, it needed a bit of work. 
Right. OK. <laughs> well, uh, if, if nothing else, it tells us that you're happy with this location. Yeah, 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 I like this Definitely. location a lot. It tells us that Mikey is quite fussy. Has I, she been getting at you? I haven't <laughs> been getting at him at all, but he's got to buy a flat. <laughs> we'll show him the right one and maybe he will. I always show the right one. It's just a question of whether they realise it. Nice door. Lovely door. Yes. This first floor flat is a slightly different layout to property one, with a central hall. But again, all rooms are spacious, and there is the must have dining kitchen with a recess for the table. This one's also about 100 square feet larger, and accordingly, the price is higher. On it offers over 115,000, with a home report value of 135,000. Five grand under budget. You're smiling again, Anna, but I've seen yeah. that before. Makes no difference what you do. And look at me. It's what's on that face. Yeah, that's a smile. Yeah, good. I like it so I far. I like the floor. Like this the has fine. already wrecked my shoes. It's because your heels go through the cracks. Oh. It can't possibly buy this flat. Just pointing out where a little work might be needed, Phil. No property is perfect, remember? Let's just talk about the view out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what view? <laughs> it doesn't bother me. I don't know why. I thought it would, but I, I really don't know why it no, doesn't. It doesn't bother me either. <laughs> you might be surprised to hear. And being on a busy why. road? It's not a major issue. I feel like you're seen. more comfortable in this. Yeah, I think so. I pref so far, I prefer it. A more positive response from Mikey. But I need to see him as fired up about a property as Anna, or we'll never get anywhere. Over to you, Phil. Just from looking at Anna's face, she looks as though she's kind of ready to make that call. <laughs> <laughs> I think she would have made that call weeks and weeks ago, but I probably just want that a little bit more. It probably is a value for money thing. Like, it's just the way I am. I think I expect quite a lot. I don't know. I mean, everybody does when yeah. they start house hunting. But once you've seen 40, yeah. it's time to get I think a bit real. Maybe the woman who knows him best knows what it'll take for Mikey to get real. Is he risk averse in other parts of his life? In everything. <laughs> so how can we make him hungry for a flat? I feel like he needs to get really excited about it. Like, I just don't think he's there yet. And I don't know why. Do I sense a little frustration from Anna? What gives you that idea, Kirsty? Maybe a utility room or a study? Yeah, I could lock you in here. She is getting impatient, I can, you can just see that. And I feel I just say, look, Mikey, just buy the flat that Anna wants. You're never going to find the right flat for you. You're always going to see every single problem. But he's not bothered about the views or the busy roads. I didn't say he was aesthetically aware. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. I sense Anna's not the only one feeling frustrated now. Best take this outside. It's on offers over 115. Okay. Home report uh, at 135. Okay. Right. Okay. That puts the other one into a brighter light, I think, the first one. I, I think the other one is being shined on by the star of Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the first one stands out a lot more now, considering this is a home report of 15,000 more. Mm. It still needs work. The first one needed work. It's not that much more. Mm. Flat number one. Closing date, midday tomorrow. He's frowning already. No, he's not frowning. He's looking rather brighter than he has all day. <laughs> well, whichever way you look at it, we might just be on the brink of a decision. Well, who knows what might happen overnight? A new day, and I'm pushing John and Stella's search to new limits, 90 minutes from Glasgow to the western shores of Loch Fyne and the town of Inverary. My next property still has a fine view for John, and as we're only a 10-minute walk from the town itself, we're much less remote than property one for Stella. I mean, I know Inverary, and it's one of the little towns I like. It's a place I come out to and sort of show people. Coming from down south, Stella's not as familiar with the area, but being a bit further out could give them a wishless, tick-tastic house. First impressions, yeah. you know, I, I like the house, like yeah. the area. Good. The trade-off for having the views and being on the edge of the town is th we've got a sloping garden. Yeah. Okay. But that is the compromise here. You can always put a mini ski slope in there. <laughs> <laughs> the slope's not a downer then, and the house is quite a stunner. 
Custom built only five years ago, it's light and bright with bags of space for family and friends, with four bedrooms, three of which are upstairs, each with an ensuite. Downstairs has a separate living room with a lock view, as well as fabulous open plan kitchen and dining area. It offers over 325,000 with a home report of 350 matching their budget. I can't wait to see their reaction to this one. Coming through, lovely big okay. doors. Oh, and this is nice. You spoke about having an open yeah. plan way of cooking, yeah. entertaining, eating. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, that's it's probably in your, what's in your mind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Ideal. I'm not surprised Stella likes this room, but the whole house will need to feel pretty special for her to consider moving out this far. It's a good size, yeah. though. And then you get that view. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I like this house. <laughs> Just little things, little bits about it. Yeah. It was actually the outside of the house that I was kind of hesitant about, but they seemed to deal with that perfectly well on arrival. Upstairs, well, they're saying all the right things. Well, John certainly is. Stella's not saying much at all, but I think her concerns are more outside than in. My only worry is where it is in terms of... Business of, for the future. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we can look at that. But... Stella hopes to start a business catering to holiday homes, so the local tourist trade is every bit as important to her as the house. I love the house. I can I live in there, yeah. Yeah, I easily. think there's just a few things yeah. around it that it's... And I think it's like, yeah, it doesn't, it's not a, wow, I'm in love with this house and I, I'll live with everything else. You know, I'm going to put up with it. It's a case of if we can make, if we could make everything else work. My only real concern is the location of, of where we are. But you have got a touristy town Absolutely. right yeah. on yeah. the doorstep. Yeah. So. And that's, that's yeah. part of what we need to look at. Yeah. You know. It's mm. not a no, but it's just, you know, you'd need to think about it. Well, I guess that's a definite maybe, and I aim to please. So on my next property, I'm going for a bullseye. This week, we're in Glasgow and Argyll. I'm ducking and diving around the West End, trying to find the perfect city pad for Anna and Mikey. And I'm taking both the high road and the low road in a bid to find Stella and John at Desres with all this on the doorstep. Neither search is proving a breeze. The two flats I've shown Anna and Mikey in Glasgow haven't got Mikey that far up. I probably just want that a little bit more. So I'm still trying to get this search sparking. In the surrounding countryside, my search hasn't quite ignited either. Stella and John are moving nearly 500 miles from Hampshire, and it's becoming clear that location is key, not just for the Scottish views, but for Stella's intended business, providing catering for holidaymakers. For our third property, we're just across the water from the last one in Inverary, on the eastern side of Loch Fyne, in the village of Stracker. And I'm hoping this charming spot and renovated former crofter's cottage will offer them all they want, including being close to a tourist area and views to die for. I hate the view already. <laughs> <laughs> what about the house? Yeah. yeah, lovely. Outside gets approval and inside should also impress. This house has been extended and renovated, so it now has four bedrooms, three upstairs, and a master with ensuite on the ground floor. And the sitting room extension offers a double whammy in the view department. Soothing waters on one side, a beautiful garden on the other. Priced at offers over £325,000, with a home report value of 345, it would be comfortable for John and Stella at 5K under budget. Um, and then into the kitchen, which is it's perfectly OK. However, uh -huh. easy to imagine this wall yeah. uh, being removed. Yeah, absolutely. You'd want to, yeah. wouldn't you, to have this, yeah. it's to about have this room? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in terms of your business plan, Stella, mm. there are ten self-catering houses in and around the village mm -hmm. and there's five caravan parks within 15 miles of here. Okay. So it feels like there's quite a lot going on. Yeah, it's promising. <laughs> It's great to see their shared enthusiasm for this place. It's so bright in here. Loads of lights. Yeah. yeah, really. Well, bright. I wasn't expecting this. But we are all naturally drawn <laughs> out here. Suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> traffic. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's going to be a lot of traffic on this road. No, that's nice. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> 
Even the nearby road isn't going to put John off the views, but he's not the only one who's fallen for them. There are already three notes of interest on this property, with a closing date five days away. I don't think I had really understood how important the view was until he was stood there, and it's just written all over his face, this is it. It was good. It was a good moment. So I'm nearly hitting my head off of that. Yeah. So there'd be interesting people walking by here. Mm. But then I suppose if you use that as your guest room, yeah, you wouldn't would. necessarily have people coming up here, yeah. would you? The eaves might impact access to rooms upstairs, but Stella is certainly looking to like the place. <sighs> Actually, <laughs> yeah. you can imagine seeing I'd take them. that seat away. Yeah. In fact, I'd even take that little wall away. <laughs> They're practically settling in. You could be onto a winner here, Phil. How do you get on upstairs? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. You wouldn't want too many tall people coming mm. along, would you? I'd just say duck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. You are, you're, you're both trying to make the house work. Seems like both property three and two have their attractions, but I'm hoping my property four will top the lot. Back in the city bustle of Glasgow, Anna and Mikey have been mulling over yesterday's viewings. The location of property one gave it the edge. However, it does need work to make it the home they want, and it's going to seal bids at noon today, so it's crunch time. What are you feeling about property one? Do you like it? Yeah. We like the location. We like, the lo we like enough mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. It's a strong flat. We're not adverse to doing work, but we just know from looking in the market that with the money we've got and the situation that we're in, that it's very unlikely that we'll be able to find a property that we can afford to buy and to do work to. We're more realistic now, I think. Yeah. We might be getting to the crux of things. Mikey wants value for money. He knows taking on a doer-upper can be a great way of getting it. But like many other young buyers, he and Anna are buying with a minimum deposit, so there's no spare cash to do work. Is there any way of subverting it? I don't think so. The money just isn't there. So definitely, you're absolutely sure you're definitely walking away from property number one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame, as property one could have been a great place. But now I know it's going to take a more finished flat to get Mikey to commit. And I may just have the answer. Our third property is between two of their preferred parts of Glasgow's West End, Partick and Thornwood. Nice looking building. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Good. Right location. Good location, yep. yeah. Tech, tech so far. And I expect a few more ticks from perfectionist Mikey here. As with the other flats they've seen, this top floor one has good proportions and a dining kitchen. But here they wouldn't have to worry about doing any work. Under the Scottish system, it's on the market and offers over £125,000, with a home report value of £140,000. So squeaks in at the top of their budget. Yeah. Good. Yes, first impressions, very good. Oh, Mikey's <laughs> looking happy. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Want Let's to see more? It. More than Definitely. OK. Definitely. OK. More than OK. You heard it here first. <laughs> As predicted, the condition of the flat is helping to sell it to Mikey. Oh, wow. Nice. Feels very spacious. The it's bay is massive. It's a very big room. Yeah. The bay uh -huh. is massive. It's a huge amount of light. Gosh, have I finally got that long for excitement in Mikey's eyes? Good size. Nice. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Another tick. <laughs> Ticks a go-go here, Kirsty. It is a flat for the risk averse. It has a lot of strong suits, but it doesn't need any work doing to it particularly, and you could make it quite nice. So I'm pretty confident that they're going to see that. So what do you think? Yeah, good. This is good. So far, I'm happy with the flat in general. I like it. Yeah, really me like too. It. Yeah. Good location. Definitely, yeah. Definitely happy so far. Excited? I am excited, are you? Yes. Good. The communal garden could do with some TLC if they want to hang out there, but overall the response is looking good. Out of ten? Ten. Ten? Nine. <laughs> Nothing's ten. As the Glaswegians say, ya dancer. This search is finally on the up. I'm hoping for a 10 myself for my last option on Stella and John's ambitious house hunt. I'm pushing their search boundaries again, this time taking them just over eight miles north of the head of Loch Lomond to a property just outside the village of Crean Larrack, one of the gateways to the highlands. It's halfway along the famous long-distance walking path, 
the West Highland Way. We might be further out, but here they get a fantastic house in an amazing setting complete with stunning views. It's what this part of Scotland is all about. Your playground is right out there. Yeah. Yeah. And you get a whacking great house wow, like I that. Know. Yeah. Compared yeah. to others, it does look a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a bit. Which is quite exciting. Yeah. Not only is the house a great whacking one with 1.3 acres of land, it's got a direct line to a steady stream of tourists who might appreciate Stella's planned catering business. And the West Highland Way is, is literally behind the property here. So you've got 40 to 50,000 people that walk that every year. It's hugely popular. Mm, great opportunity there. Yeah, even selling hamburgers at the end. <laughs> <laughs> at the gate. <laughs> you could almost afford to invite them in. There's so much room in the house. This is nearly 3,000 square feet, spread out over three levels. Here, John and Stella would not only get the four bedrooms they want on the first floor, but also a large, versatile space up in the loft. On the ground floor, the living areas all have generous dimensions, so overall, plenty of room to run a business and have visitors to stay. Honoured offers over £350,000, with a home report of 375, it's pushing their budget but it certainly offers the most bang for their buck they could hope to get. You've got utility rooms and boot rooms and an office and a downstairs loo. Wow. Brilliant. And... Brilliant. That's this is enough. <laughs> Plenty. I think, there's, I think there's more than enough. Could be a solid contender. And they've yet to experience the little bonus off the master bedroom. Yeah, yeah. that's lovely. You want today. nature on the doorstep. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. You can just pick up with who you're going to climb for the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. No, you just wouldn't imagine that you'd, you'd ever get anywhere like this. That's because we've travelled further. Mm. Yeah. You get a lot more house for the money. Yeah. This place certainly is a whopper. It's the one, two, three. I'm lost already. With plenty of rooms for any friends and family visiting from down south. You could have people up here and you'd never see them again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The house and grounds have clearly got John and Stella excited. Oh, my God. Offering them the most of all the properties we've seen. But unfortunately, not an easy walk to the Korean Lara community. It's got everything we want, but we really have to look at it, you know, practically as yeah. well. Yeah, I guess the only thing that isn't 100% for us is the location. Wherever we go from here, you always have to get in a car and go realistically. Yeah. It's a lot to take in, to be honest, yeah. and it's like very hard to take it on at once. At the moment, I'm just... <laughs> don't know where I'm going with yeah. it. It is a complicated decision, but it's a decision that you guys have to take. Yeah. Why don't we um, go and have a sit and a think and just brainstorm it all through? Mm. <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> if anyone can help them figure it out, it's you, Pip. Let's hope so, or they'll be going nowhere fast. We're in Scotland on the hunt for a long-term home in the countryside and a first-time home in the city. I've shown John and Stella four impressive properties across Argyll and Stirlingshire. One is definitely out, but I don't know if any of the others are definitely in. And in Glasgow's West End, I'm working on the fact that Mikey and Anna like the moving condition of the last property I showed them in Thornwood. So I'm here to show them one that's even more done up just around the corner. You know where we are? Yeah. yeah. And that's because they've already seen this flat, viewing it a few weeks before we came on board. Someone else offered on it and a sale was agreed, but now it's back on the market at the same price as property three, but smaller. In my opinion, having seen this flat, it will clarify your thoughts on property number three. And while we're viewing this flat, Mikey's parents, who've been on nearly all their 40 viewings, are going to check out property three before meeting us back here so they can help us compare the two. I'll be very surprised if you go for this one over property three. Mm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Let's see. This flat's in beautiful condition with plenty of original features as well as a brand new kitchen and lovely bathroom. Its owner offers over £125,000 with a home report value of £140,000. I think it uh, seems incredibly small. Because I thought if we came back here, I would just be like, I love it, that's it. But now I've seen the other one, I just can think about that one. Mm. Looking good for property three, then. And the bay feels about two thirds of the size of the other one. I'm hearing a clear preference from risk averse Mikey. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Oh, God, those things. 
That, that must be your mum and dad. Yeah. Let's see how parents, Anne and Jamie, feel the two properties compare. Hello. This search has always been a bit of a family affair. What did you think of the other one? Yeah, we, yeah. we, we, we liked, liked it. it. Yeah, I think there's great potential in it. This obviously feels cleaner and fresher and brighter. Yes. This flat definitely has the more finished look, and there's no denying the appeal of a smart bathroom and kitchen. The units are really uh, nice. New units. Do you prefer this flat, Anne, to the other one? Ever so slightly, yes. I like this flat, I, d I must admit, I do. I think there's a lot to weigh up. You two, go off and have a look at the flat. OK. Cool. I will keep your parents. Thank you. Hmm, <laughs> we know Mikey values his parents' opinions, so we could have a spanner in the decision-making works here. Do you think this or the other one come as close as you're going to get, or were you hoping for better for them? I think this probably does come yeah, pretty close. Yeah, I think this is probably as close. Yeah, I, I think this probably does. Get. It's pretty much uh, ticking most of the boxes. It's compact, but it's everything we need, I suppose. I think bigger is better, and flat number three is a good one. But she seems to be very keen on this. It's nice to see a family have something together. I love. Yeah, I'm starting to kind of fall a wee bit for this place again. Don't say that. Oh dear. <laughs> Not good with a dilemma, Anna, you know that. Frankly, I'll be happy with any decision. They're now fast approaching 50 viewings, and this search needs to end. We just hope they're not back to being confused. And out in Stirlingshire, I'm with Stella and John to weigh up the options. They've now decided that the two properties in Balfron and Cree and Larrick were just too remote, and the amazing view at Stracker couldn't win them over either. I'm very mindful that this is one of the biggest decisions that you're ever going to make in mm -hmm. your life. Yeah, huge. <laughs> Surprisingly, the property on the outskirts of Inverary has emerged the winner. Well played, Phil. The house itself, we, we love. It's a beautiful house. So now it's a question of what they want to do about it. I think we Other need to look at that area yeah. a bit more. Yeah. I think we have to feel that we're comfortable in that yeah. small town as well, because yeah. we can be part of that community. Yeah. And it, will, it, will that work, you know? Because mm. in the yeah. past, we moved to an area where it was for the house and not for the area. Mm. Okay. And so it's a lesson learned for us. Yeah. And what, what kind of things are you going to be looking into? Just the proximity to other places, um, away from Inverary, Inverary itself, what that has to offer um, as an area, um, and just the opportunities for, yeah. for us. Absolute sympathy with, with wanting to take some time. <laughs> yeah. As and when you've gone back to Inverary mm. and, and had some more thoughts about there and had a bit of time, um, will you let me know? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. 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 It's an easy place to fall for, so I hope that once they're more familiar with Inverary, Stella and John will feel completely confident about their choice. And with such a cracking property, I'd be delighted to make an offer for them. And back in Glasgow, are Anna and Mikey any close to a decision between the seductive finish of property four and the size of property three? I think the dilemma we've got now between these two is what's great about one isn't so great about the other. So one's got more space, but it doesn't have the good communal area. So it's just really trying to work out which compromise we're mm. happier with making. How do you two want to progress? Do you want to progress with one flat, neither flat, both flats? I think we should sleep on it and probably put notes of interest on both of them. Wow, two <laughs> flats. I know. You could end I up know. with both. Could end up with both. <laughs> he can live in one, I'll live in the other. It's fantastic. We can swap on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you want? I don't know. <laughs> After sleeping on it, property four won the day. Unfortunately, Mikey and Anna's top offer of £137,000 was rejected. But that same day, a one-bed ground floor flat in the same building came up for sale. Mikey's parents were immediately sent round to see it. And surprisingly, without even viewing it themselves, Anna and Mikey made an offer of £135,000, which was accepted. I had the keys, walked in, and there was a bit of a surreal feeling of, we've never seen this before, but we own it. So I don't know if we'll ever do that again, but it was, uh, it was, it's, uh, it's been worth it, because we love it. 
I knew it was the right location, we knew the size, we'd seen the pictures and we kind of trusted their judgement. Yeah. We managed to get the sort of big kitchen diner that we were looking for. Then we got a nice garden space, that was something that we really liked about the block itself. I think having Kirsty with us was good. She kind of showed us that you'll always find something that's wrong with something and I guess possibly that was the good thing about me not coming to see it because that decision was kind of taken out of my hands a wee bit. All's well that ends well. And with a gorgeous flat to call their own, it's clear Mikey has finally mastered the art of commitment. The last thing we did before moving out of Edinburgh was um, I proposed to Anna, so now we're engaged and looking to get married and so we'll get this all sorted and then we need to really start planning the wedding, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, you two. Should I get a new hat? It's all changed for Stella and John too. Whilst exploring Inverary, a five-bedroom property they'd had their eye on 22 miles away in the village of Arica, came back on the market. I think we realised then that this type of house was what we were after. They didn't waste a moment and secured it for £348,000, just under budget. We just felt that it was meant to be, so decided, mm, right, let's just get an it. offering. <laughs> And we always said it'd be very hard to get both a lock hand to Mountain View, and we've got that. We've got four Monroes on our doorstep just to walk out on. Yeah. You know, so you can't really complain. <laughs> you open the curtains in the morning, and we have a little sort of argument who's opening the curtain first to look out. <laughs> it's a great space inside, the kitchen is great. You know, now we can be somewhere and get settled and enjoy living in the area and in the house. Being a short walk to the local town and still on the tourist path should prove fruitful for Stella's catering business. Arica is great because you have got that sense of community and there are things to do quite local. Although it's quiet, it's not completely isolated and remote. We've got sort of people already booked in for about the next three months coming to visit, which is fantastic, as long as they bring a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little decorating's a small price to pay for their perfect house.